Good morning. Uh, welcome to our uh, beginning workshop on um, the use of uh, mini assessment techniques, particularly the mini Q and uh, related uh, methods. This morning I'm going to talk about neuronal dynamics and the foundations of z-scores, the concepts behind them. Uh, I'm Tom Kalora. I'm with Brain Master Technologies and I'm a, a biomedical engineer, neurophysiologist, uh, developer and uh, researcher in this area and um, I'll be talking about the foundational ma material and information you're going to want uh, when you pursue some of these assessment methods. Uh, I'll begin with a, a, a bit of introductory information. Uh, there is a history of individuals using what's, what would generally be called a mini-assessment as a method for analyzing brain waves and assessing the condition of any individual. Uh, there are a number of practitioners. Uh, Paul Swingle, for example, is one of the earliest. Uh, Len Oakes, uh, others who have uh, made a uh, practice out of using a one or two channel EEG system and uh, making an assessment by moving around making short measurements at various locations. Uh, I have to mention Margaret Ayers also as one of the first people to uh, initiate this practice. It's a simple and economical technique and it's very effective when one knows what you're looking for. Uh, and essentially you go to a certain location and you look at the EEG energy and power and frequency distributions uh, probably with eyes open as I and eyes closed possibly under a task and based on this small amount of information you can uh, compare the individual with a normal population or with that same individual at a previous time and make an assessment of what uh, changes uh, what uh, interesting uh, conditions may be present what we've been doing over the last few years is structuring this type of a method, uh, working with uh, folks who have um, been developing both hardware and software, um, ourselves included, so that we can automate and um, structure the methods. Uh, John Demos, of course, is uh, leading in this area, uh, as is Richard Souter, and some other individuals who are working in this uh, particular direction. So the intent is to get a brief assessment, not to try and get a comprehensive whole head analysis. Uh, now since we call it a mini Q, there's a natural tendency to compare these techniques with a QEEG. And there's a significant difference in intent, although some of the techniques and some of the interpretations will be similar. Uh, to use a loose analogy, we sort of uh, uh, akin a mini Q with a chest X-ray, if you will, whereas a QEEG is more like a CAT scan. Uh, the chest X-ray gives you a certain percentage of coverage. Obviously, the majority of, of coverage is there. Uh, quantitatively, we feel that something on the order of 80% of the coverage of um, different types of circumstances and such is available through a mini assessment. But it's much cheaper. Uh, quicker, simpler to do, more economical, and it's practical to do a mini Q uh, more frequently. You could do a mini Q on someone easily, uh, you could consider doing it once a week or after every few sessions. Uh, a QEEG, on the other hand, is much more costly, more comprehensive. Uh, simply to get a QEEG read by a professional can easily be $500 or even $1,000. So while the Mini-Q is not a replacement for a QEEG, it is an adjunct technique and it's very beneficial. We've even found practitioners who recommend doing a Mini-Q type assessment before a QEEG. The benefit there is that when you undergo the more costly uh, one-time uh, assessment, you're going in with your eyes open, essentially, and seeing what uh, you might be looking for. Obviously, another benefit of a mini Q is that it's more practical to do it on a repeated basis uh, to watch for changes and variations. And again, if you know what you're looking for, if you have some sense of what's happening, uh, the mini Q is quite sufficient. I'm going to talk initially about the underlying neuronal mechanisms and the types of phenomena that we expect to see through an EEG assessment. And then later on I will talk uh, in more detail about some of the specific things we get from a, uh, a mini-assessment. In terms of electrophysiology, we are talking about the electroencephalogram, the EEG. And the EEG is a representative of, of neuronal potentials. These are electrical potentials generated by neurons in the cortex of the brain. 
The dipoles, which are the underlying electrical generators, are produced by single cells. And the brain, of course, contains something on the order of 100 billion of these cells. And when these cells act in synchrony or in unison, then the synchrony reinforces the strength of the signal. So whenever we measure a biological potential from the scalp and we attribute it to the brain, it's due to the synchronous activity of populations of brain cells. And this synchronous activity reflects the neuronal dynamics and the organization and processing of information that's going on underneath. Uh, we, of course, are aware that we could also be picking up other sources of electrical energy, such as muscle, eye, heart, um, other electrical processes going on in and around the head and the body. So the, one of the important aspects of the assessment is understanding the sources of artifacts, uh, such as muscle tension, heart uh, beat, and um, related uh, generators. The brain physiology and anatomy are what define the electrical generators that we're looking at. So if we understand the structure of the cortex and the behavior of the brain in terms of generating biological rhythms, then we can understand the origins of the different frequencies, amplitudes, other components. We'll also be talking about what are called connectivity measures, including coherence, phase, asymmetry, and related measures. All of these reflect the brain anatomy and the brain physiology and give us an indication of what's going on underneath. And they're used, they're, they're useful on a normative basis for assessing the, the, the person. Volume conduction is the mechanism that we uh, define, which is the mechanism through which the scalp receives the electrical activity from the underlying tissue. Uh, the cerebral fluid, the brain tissue, and even the skull are electrical conductors, and electrical energy passes through them passively, like any uh, electrical current passes through a resistive medium. And so it's possible by measuring at the scalp to determine the electrical activity that is going on underneath, which has been transferred to the scalp through this process of volume conduction. I'm actually going to show some pictures that uh, relate to this phenomenon. Finally, there's a skin interface to the sensors, and this is the key that we use in order to get the data. Uh, we use sensors of various types, uh, stick-on sensors, uh, gold or tin or silver discs might be used. We also have hats which are used. Maybe you can pass me that hat, Ron. This is an example of an electrode hat, which is used to make contact with a large number of sites at once. Now, an important comment to be made here is in traditional mini assessment methods which do not use a cap to manually place sensors and the first concern with that is whether they're placed accurately and in the correct locations the second issue is in order to get this mini assessment it's necessary to move the sensors about and the practitioners I mentioned earlier uh, Paul Swingle, Margaret Ayers, uh, Len Oaks and others have a practice of moving the sensors about and uh, as a result you can get maybe up to a minute of recording from one spot. Actually, typically people look at maybe only 10 or 15 seconds of recording. And then they store the data, record it, maybe even with just a pad and a uh, pen, a piece of paper. And then they move to another site and uh, gather more information. There's one compromise which we accept, and that is that the sensor positions are not recorded simultaneously. In order to get simultaneous recording, of course, you need to use something like a cap, but then you also need to have an amplifier with something on the order of 20 amplifiers at once, 20 inputs, and that puts you into the realm of a traditional multi-channel EEG system. The techniques we are talking about take the recordings individually, either one at a time or in pairs, uh, and uh, then the, you're able to get a certain amount of information which is of value but while still while it's being done more or less on an individual basis.